things got to be very ugly. Everything closed up on us. We were refused every place and the possibilities of survival got smaller and people, even like my father, realized we have to get out. In the 21st century, we're trying to figure out how to continue to preserve and promote the history that's so important in our archives. And we felt that young people today need innovative ways to reach these materials. It was very different back when the Leo Beck Institute was founded and it was only 10 years after the end of World War II. So the 1938 project is a direct reflection of that by providing personal stories and also by doing those on the internet and using social media, we think we can reach new generations with the story that we're preserving. The basic premise of the 1938 project is to bring posts from the past. What that means is taking individual stories through letters, diaries, memoirs, and other means and publishing them on a daily basis so people can feel the individual experiences throughout 1938. In our project, we showed that not everybody was able to get out from Germany or Austria, and also how painful this leaving was for many of the people. So we, for example, show how people struggled to receive affidavits, and also how emotionally difficult it was departuring from Germany or Austria. Dear Mr. Donald Bieber, it is so very difficult to write to you because I'm quite sure you have no idea who I am. How could you? Well, do you remember you traveled last year, March 1937, from Italy to Vienna? We went by sleeping car and there we met. I liked you and you seemed to like me. Anyway, we had a long talk about everything and nothing. This is a letter by Erika Langstein that she wrote in June 1938 in Vienna when she was 19 years old. I'm 19 years old too and from Vienna as well and it's quite hard for me to imagine being in a situation like that when you're only 19 years old and have to escape your home country and leave everything behind. And she then tells him about the difficult situation of her and her family and she's hoping that he is um, a humanitarian enough of a person he can offer an affidavit for her and her family to flee Austria. In the end he did was not able or chose not to provide an affidavit for her and her family. And I see at least 40 people, maybe more, that passed before my eyes. You know, children I went to school with, relatives, friends of my parents, so many, so many, and I escaped. It turns out that in 1938, um, extending uh, through uh, the conclusion of the Second World War, uh, the world did not open its arms to receive German Jews, or for that matter, Euro European Jews more generally. So we're using social media to reach people around the world in a place where they're already spending a lot of time uh, looking at all different aspects of their own daily lives and trying to inject a historical perspective, the daily lives of people who are experiencing a real crisis and trauma that I think people can uh, use to reflect on uh, as they process all the other information that comes across their feed. It is that idea of literally, as we do so often with our phones, zooming in and then looking and finding those details. We work with teachers and educators to expand 1938 projects potential as an educational resource. Both the workshops and our pedagogical resources website result with an ever-growing list of ideas of how to apply 1938 project in a classroom setting. I don't think one needs an exceptionally vivid imagination to understand how relevant that historical lesson is to today. In that regard, I really applaud the Leo Beck Institute for undertaking this really searching examination of 1938, this consequential year that in a certain sense marked the tipping point in the history of Jews in Germany, and particularly Jews under the regime of Adolf Hitler. 
I can't emphasize enough how important it is to learn what we can from the past, learn what we can from 1938, in order to understand the present in richer and more responsible terms.